Right, so what have we got here are two power supplies from a couple of trash picked uh, BenQ FP71G Plus computer monitors. And these are some of a few computer monitors that actually fail before the caps bust. These are not good quality caps, they are elite brand usually. Seen some with caps on, and we've got a couple of Lelons here. But before the caps fail on these, they all get the same problem. And it's these caps in the inverter. They sit there. And they get a bad solder joint on one of the legs. And this transistor always fails. Without any change between monitors, it's a 2SC5707. And they always fail. But another sort of strange thing about these is this fuse down here. This is the fuse for the inverter and it's a non-resettable type. But it's not just your common glass fuse like this one. But it's some special type and it fails in a really really strange way. I've got my meter here set to 20k and in about half of the cases this fuse will turn into a resistor. So let's check them out in these monitors. So I think the left one was... yeah this one is pretty much just nothing there. But if we look at the right power supply 3k yeah it's a 3k resistor that's obviously not going to pass enough current to power on the inverter and I've spent so much time with a mate and we could not we couldn't understand because we measure, measured these caps here and there was power everywhere I mean you've got voltage at the collectors of the drive transistors why on earth would it not power on? but of course the as soon as any current it tried to get drawn by the inverter control IC the power would dip and it would reset so we spent a lot of time trying to figure that out but I know it these days these power supplies should be okay. I've replaced, well, replaced, I've taken part from this one and put into this one. And this one should power up as soon as I replace the fuse. So I'm going to have to try doing that, and hopefully, I'll end up with one working monitor. And once I can get my hands on a couple of new transistors, I know my mate who fixed these, these monitors as well has about 40 of them. I should be able to get the other one up and running as well. These are not very special monitors, they are just 17 inch 5 to 4 aspect ratio things, but they are decent monitors, can probably fetch about 30-40 euros a piece used. Alright, I've mounted the repaired power supply back in the monitor. I just uh, bypassed the fuse with uh, a bit of wire because I know the uh, power supply regulator chip is uh, current limited that fuse is pretty well useless if something breaks it's probably gonna be a dead short anyhow so it will just go tick 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 and not turn on anyhow got the power cable coming not plugged in so let's see if this thing will fire By the way, as you can see, this cable is not plugged into the wall. That's why I'm safe to have my hands around it. But once it's plugged in, you don't want to stick your fingers anywhere near it. Let's go. Blink, blink, blink. 
blink, 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 blink. Well, that does not look too promising. Not too promising at all. It seems as if only one of the CFLs is firing. Alright, take two. I tried to put the power supply into the other monitor. There seem to be slightly different revisions. The signal management board there is not quite the same. And it seems to work in this monitor, but it doesn't seem to be able to turn the backlight off. You can see the monitor is in standby now. If I turn it off, no difference. If I turn it back on, you get picture, but <laughs> you can't turn it off. You can just quit feeding signal to the LCD. So something's probably up with this power supply, some shorted transistor, something that can't properly turn off. So I'm going to have to research that. It only uses 14 watts when it's just got the backlight on though, that's not a whole lot. I was expecting a lot more because you know, it seems to be stuck at max brightness. Oh well, back to the drawing board. I have to find the problem on the power supply that made it uh, stick on. There's this little FET that's shorted. So I looked around on the two screens and noted that the one with the uh, well, the other one had an LG Philips panel, so I hold them in more higher regard than. Uh, Chi Mei of the one that I tried to fix before, so I changed some parts around and now I'm going to try this power supply in this other LCD screen. Hopefully it will work. It's transistor, this one I think, is still in good shape. So let's plug it in and hope that it doesn't explode. And oh yeah, I checked the caps were all good. Oh yeah, I forgot to swap the fuse. There it is, whoops. Okay, that's a better fuse. Let's try that again then. Stay on, yes sir. Drawing 18 watts. This looks fine. I hope these marks are mostly dirt. They tend to be mostly dirt and should clean off. In fact, most scratches on LCD screens are actually just uh, dirt and some uh, plastic remains. You know, if you scrape it, they sort of. Uh, you get this white powdery stuff come off of them and that's just what sticks around and if you give it a really good clean they'll usually pretty much disappear even fairly severe scratches but yeah I think I can be happy with this now I've just got to get some more parts I think that all is going to be three transistors and uh, well yeah <laughs> three three new transistors for the other one to get brought back to life but I might make another video of that it's gonna take a while now. to be frank my priority in fixing stuff around here is not generally 17 inch LCD screens because 
I have a lot of 17 inch LCD screens. Also, when you've got a dirty or scratched LCD screen like this, I think it's a good idea to just take the bezel off when you can and give it a good clean without getting it full of liquid. And there you go. There's not a trace of the so called scratches on the screen anymore. I literally just cleaned them off. Not bad at all. Let's just hope that it's a good quality panel. Alright, we're all back, put back together and I've hooked the monitor up to my laptop computer over there. I've done a Windows Plus P and it seems to have detected the monitor which is always a good sign so let's turn it on and see what happens. Bank. There we go. nice and sharp although you can't see it through the camera because it doesn't have autofocus let's see what the menu has got luminance yeah they're always set to 100% brightness I don't know why people like it that way I never have my monitors on anything but 0% really anyhow I think it's always a good idea to do a factory recall on these monitors so that any stupid settings people have put into them don't carry on to the new owner but all in all this monster seems to be in good shape I don't think it's had too many hours behind it perhaps it can even tell us nope oh yeah the button layout on these things are not the best really, it's got an I button and that does the auto adjustment why on earth would they call that I? oh well I suppose that does it for that monitor until next time cheerio